Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're gonna do the crochet graduation cap for the mason jar. So really kind of a cool idea. You can make it a little gift idea. Uh, myself, uh, Daniel is suggesting a soup mix that could go in the inside and uh, just pair it with the recipe and then send somebody away to a dorm or whatever. So here's the little hat here. It is a one piece unit. So as we get bigger we're going to get them smaller and then the natural circle forms on its own. For tutorial reasons I am going to suggest a slight change in the pattern to make it a little bit easier for you. I'm also going to suggest uh, well I'm going to use a different color yarn. The black's awesome but I, for tutorial reasons you'll never see my stitch work. So I am going to be able to demonstrate that. Now the tassel looks awesome. The tassel if you see it here looks wonderful. So you just wanna dampen it after you do it and then just let it air dry and then you have it. I did an actual steamer so I just steamed it to make it look really good. So without further ado we're gonna be using a four millimeter size G crochet hook. I'm also gonna be using a tassel maker uh, to make my tassel but you can use cardboard. It does suggest that if you wish and then it's recommending a certain size uh, mason jar. So the mason jar says that it has a two and three quarter opening at the lid and so you just have to take your tape measure and look at it and that's what we have. So it, everything seems to fit and if I don't know how much bigger that it could do it but um, it will stretch just in case you're using a slightly bigger one I suppose as well. So let's uh, begin and using our cotton yarn. Lily Sugar and Cream is a choice. Black and then yellow is the what is on the pattern itself but in the meantime we're gonna get started and let's get started right now. So let's begin. We're gonna create a slip knot and we're gonna start off in the very center in the top of the hat and with your size G four millimeter hook. Chain two one and two and second chain from the hook which is the first one you're going to apply only four single crochets. So it's gonna be a nice tight top. So one, two, three and four. And then you need to slip stitch to the fourth one. So if you're not sure just count it back. So one, two, three, four, you can get that. Now if there's a hole that's left over that starting strand you just have there you can just uh, throw that through a tapestry needle and then close the hole if you have to. So let's begin round number two. So round number two we're gonna chain up one and then each one of the four stitches is gonna have three single crochets in there. So just apply one, two, and three and then just jump to the next one and do one, two, three. So you'll do all four of them like that. So you'll end up with twelve single crochets all the way around. So please do that for round number two. For row number three and going out to the end I'm going to suggest a slight change. If you would like to do it exactly as the pattern is suggesting it's chain two, one single crochet into the first stitch. When you get back around I found it kind of hard to find out where that stitch is. So I'm just gonna do a slight change here. So my change is going to be uh, chain one and one single crochet in this stitch. So this is the first half or sorry the second half of a corner. So you'll finish this corner when you come back around. The next two in a row will be a single crochet. So that's part of your side and then we'll start our next corner. So the corners will be one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet. The next two will be by themselves. So one and two and then we're doing an, another corner. So the corner will be a single crochet, chain two, one single crochet in the same one. The next two are by themselves. One and two. So notice that there was two single crochets by itself that matters for your counting in the future. So there's gonna be this is the corner so single crochet, chain two, single crochet and then the last two here are by themselves. So one and two but you wanna finish that first corner that you started with. So go right into the same one of the corner so single crochet and because it's chaining a two I would do a half double crochet over to close it. And that, that half double crochet equals a chain two space. So that's what I would do if I were you and you were me. So if you like it exactly as the pattern is written just follow that pattern. This is my improvisation. You'll see this throughout. Let's move on to round number four. So as we begin round number four here's my improvisation. So chain up one and do one single crochet in the same half uh, double crochet where they did the join. Okay so you'll finish that corner when you get back. So last time there was two by itself. Now there's four. 
So just fill those in. So there's gonna be four by itself. So count those out. So one, two, three, and four takes you to the next corner. So the next corner is here. So single crochet, chain two, single crochet. And then do the next four and then the next corner and etc. and do that all the way around. You'll see this really turning out. So this is round number four. I'm on the final side. So there's four by itself and you still have to finish that first corner. So go right into the first corner space and then join it to the first single crochet with a half double crochet. So wrap the hook first, go in the first one and then finish. And then that puts you right smack dab in the corner once again. Round number five, chain up one, one single crochet in the same space where you did the half double crochet join. And now this time there's gonna be six in a row that's by itself. So let's count those. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then that takes you to the corner. So the single crochet, chain two, single crochet and you'll do that all the way around. So this time it's six. So going on in this uh, tutorial I'm just gonna tell you how many that's in a row on its own before the corner. Corners will always remain the same until I tell you otherwise. So this is round number five. Coming up to the end of round number five just single crochet in the first one and then join with a half double crochet. Round number six, chain up one, one single crochet in the first half double crochet gap space there. This time it's gonna be eight and then corner so it'll be single crochet, chain two, single crochet. So this time there's eight in between. Please do that and this is round number six. Coming up all the way around on round number six, just single crochet in the same space as the beginning, do a half double crochet join. Round number seven, chain up one, and do one single crochet in the same space and this time it's gonna be ten in a row and then the corners are single crochet, chain two, single crochet. So make sure it's ten in a row. I'll see you at the end of round number seven. Coming up to the end of round number seven, just come into the last one and join with a half double crochet. Round number eight. So we've got a couple more rounds of growth. So just chain up one, round number eight is one single crochet in the same space as the join and this time it'll be uh, twelve single crochets in a row and then the corner is single crochet, chain two, single crochet. So please do round number eight now. Finishing up round number eight, just come into the last spot, half double crochet join. Round number nine is the last growth round there is. So chaining up one, one single crochet in the same as the join and then you have uh, 14 single crochets in a row and then the corners one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet. So 14 is your magic number on this round. When you come all the way back around you're just gonna go into the last one here and what I'm recommending to you on the last round here number nine, chain two. So don't use the half double crochet technique to close it and just slip stitch to the first single crochet. There's a reason for this in just a moment. So during the prototype when I did the actual um, testing to learn this, I actually screwed up in the corners here because I was having trouble identifying what corners were. So now that I've gone through and just changed the way that I started, it's made, made it a lot easier for me. So here's the goal. So we know that there was 14 stitches going all the way across. So what we have to do is that we have to eliminate out stitches in order to get the, the corners to go in and being able to um, fold up underneath. So let's uh, begin to work on this uh, step. This is number 10 and working in the back loops only. So now that I had you slip stitch in the last round to the first one, I need you to slip over and I need you to slip to the second one. So just slip on over first and when you slip go into the back loop only. So just if you're new to crochet, there's two strands. They equal a stitch. The front one is the front loop and the other one in behind is the back loop. So go in the back loop only and slip stitch and that's where you're gonna begin your new story. You're gonna chain up one and staying in the back loops only. Here's the thing. The, the, the last single crochet here, not the space. So the last single crochet here and the first one here is going to become two together and it's gonna cause the folding up underneath. So if you can just watch for the last one and the first one, those are gonna come two together. So do you really need to excessively count? No, not really if you can look for that. So you're just gonna single crochet yourself across. It does give you a, uh, a stitch count of 14 um, stitches across. And remember there was 14 in the last one. Therefore the first one 
and uh, if the first one and the last one on a side gives it a total count of 16. So that's why we're able to do that. So just going across. I don't wanna overcomplicate you with the math. Just look for the last one and the first one. And we'll call it good and even, right? <laughs> I was never very good at math. I actually never even went to my graduation. So okay, so I'm gonna go to the last one here, pull through, just hold it and then come to the first one here and pull through and then pull through all three and then that just ends up making it one and to turn. So continue with the back loop only, single crochet and you'll notice that it just automatically just wanted to fold up underneath which is our whole point. So you're gonna go all the way across again. The first and the last stitch are gonna be come two together and I'll meet you at the end of this round. It's not a hard round and we're now getting our established on the fun stuff. So let's continue our journey. When you come up all the way around in number 10, the last one, pull through and then collect the very first one. Remember that we slip stitched over it. So we're just gonna get the last one here and pull through and then slip stitch to the very beginning single crochet. So the back loop was the only time that we're gonna be using the back loop that causes a natural fold in the material. You'll see it's kind of wanting to bowl up which is the whole point. So round number 11, let's begin. So round number 11, we're gonna go back to using both strands. I wanna show you, share with you a tip. So right at the ends is where we did the actual two together. If you can see that, you don't have to count stitches my friends. So what we need to do this time is do three together uh, for the single crochet. So you're gonna get not only the one that is a two together this time, but you're gonna get its friend in front and the friend in behind it and all three become together. So it gets even more narrow. So we're getting ourselves to the point where it will start folding inside also creating the semicircle. So to begin, we're technically on the third one of a three together. So you need to slip stitch to the next one over first and then begin. So chaining up one and do one single crochet in each. Now it does say that there is um, a total of 12 stitches that are on its own. When you go to do this you can either count it or if you're like me once you understand what you need to look for you just automatically just do it, right? So our concentration is to getting that corner to keep folding up underneath. So I'm coming across. So I can see this is the two together. So I need its friend in front and the friend in behind. So going into the next one, pull through and hold it. Next one which is the two together, pull through and the next one after it. So all three friends just became together and we pull through all four loops. And then we continue it round again. And you're gonna do that into the next corner and then get, grab three of the friends and make them join together and you'll see this will even want it to fold fold over even more. Continue this all the way around for round number 11. When you came all the way around the last three are gonna be three together. And that's why we slip stitched over one. So pull those and then just join it to the first single crochet. That was round number 11. So now you can see the points are actually wanting to stay out and then this is building into being more of a circle which is the whole point. So round number 12 here we go and we're also going to be doing the three together. So if you can look for it it's awesome. So you see three togethers here in the corner. So you'll need the friend in front and the friend in behind to do the three together and then you'll be doing the last three together. So just like before we need to slip stitch over one to get out of the way so that the stitch that I was just on will become part of the three together at the end. So just chaining up one. There is a stitch count if you would like it. It's ten single crochets before that but if you can see where those three together is which I can then you can just madly pump these out. These kind of tips are perfect because if you're gonna do multiples it's easier to have this kind of advice than it is to count because you can drive yourself nuts. So that's the three together. You can see that it looks different. So you get the front and front, front and behind. Let's join their hands with the three together single crochet and then keep moving on and you'll do that every time you hit a corner and the last corner um, that we will finish will be three together which I'll see you there in just a moment. So coming up all the way back around you just uh, put in the last three together, join their hands and then slip stitch to the beginning and let's move on to the next round. So that's what it's looking like and you can see if you push these down you can see that the edging is forming beautifully. Let's keep on going. Let's move along to round number 13. So we're going to slip stitch over one more time again 
just to get out of the way because the last three will be three together. And then again looking at the corner you can see it more and more. This is the three together here. So the front in front and the front and behind will become together. So just chain up one and do one single crochet in each and then keep on going on those corners of three together single crochets. If you're into craft shows and stuff these kind of tips of knowing what to look for can really pound out quite a few of these. So put the three together. So here's the middle one, the front and front, the front and behind. Join them together and then keep moving around. So this is round number 13. I'll see you at the end of this round. So coming up all the way around, around number 13 the last three become together. And then we're gonna be changing directions then round number 14 we're now gonna officially start doing the circle part of the hat. So just join it. So we're just gonna start exactly where we are and let's take round number 14 slow. So let's begin. Chain up one and do one single crochet in each of the first three. So one, two, three. Then single crochet two together. So put the next two together just like you would have done on the corner but there's only two. So, and then you're going to do one um, sorry one single crochet in the next seven. So let's count those out. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven and then put two together and then the next seven are on their own. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven and then put the next two together and then again the next seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven and then put the next two together And then what we have is that the last here are all gonna be single crochets. So you can do those last ones going all the way back. So the two together, sorry the three together stitch is the last one. Join it to the first. So if you punch this down you can actually see the circle. And we're going to be moving on to round number 15. It gets, now it's actually just 15 and 16 left. So let's do number 15. So number 15 we're gonna chain up one and we're only gonna work on the front loop only. So last time we did a back loop to get it to fold backward. This time we need it to get fold forward. So we're gonna chain up one and right in the same one you'll only wanna use the front loop. And you're gonna just apply one single crochet in each of the front loops only going all, all the way around. And I'll see you at the end of this round. This is round number 15. When you get all the way around I'm still on the front loop and just join it to the beginning single crochet. So we're now gonna switch back to the regular loops in rounds number 16 and 17. So you see 16th round and then you'll see a slight note underneath saying repeat the last round one more time. So 16 and 17 are just chain up one and do one single crochet in each stitch going all the way around. Then join it and then do it one more time for round 17 and then this hat is actually done and then we're gonna move on to the tassels. So please do rounds number 15 and 16, sorry 16 and 17 next and then I'll see you at the end of that. When you go to finish you're just gonna join and strongly recommending because you'll need it anyway with tapestry needle. So um, just get a tapestry needle and some scissors which I don't have at my desk at the moment because they're upstairs. I'll be right back in just a moment. So now that I rescued my scissors I'm gonna pull through. This is the problem with moving my scissors from my studio. I always say to myself don't forget your scissors and I've lost more scissors in my lifetime than I care to admit. So we're just gonna throw this onto the tapestry needle and just turn it to the inside of the project and just weave it in the inside. Just stay on the inside of the, the fibers. So don't let that needle hit the outside to ruin the outside look. And all you wanna do is dra drag it back and forth a total of three times just in the back side here. And then it will never fall out. So now we're gonna begin working on the tassels next. And you can tr safely just trim that right down to the, the project. 
and therefore you can just shape it and that's what your little hat looks like and then you can get rid of that center one that we started with too. So let's begin to work on the tassel. You can do a tassel maker or you can do a piece of cardboard. A piece of cardboard is about four inches uh, in, and you just keep going around but I'm gonna be lazy and I'm gonna use my tassel maker next. Okay, so let's start with our tassel maker and if you're using the cardboard you'll want an extra long strand too. It's better to have too long than it is not to have enough. If you're using cardboard there is uh, just wrap it around the cardboard and make sure a strand is underneath. So in this case my tassel maker is here. I'm just gonna put my long strand here through these two holes and that'll hold it. So I'm just gonna pull the one side a little bit short because I'm gonna wrap it like that. So once I start wrapping I'm just gonna go up over top. So that's considered one and two, three, four and I want a total of 25 wraps. Once I have my 25 wraps I'm just gonna safely cut that and cut an extra long tail from this yarn as well. So you have that on the side. First thing I need to do is that I need to balance this so just pull it and get it so that it's in an equal spot. So just join the two tails here and then pull And what I want to do is I want to tie that. Just shift it if you have to. Now what I want to do is take the other strand and see how this is a, has an indentation. Take the other strand and go through the indentation and balance it so it's the equal width or the equal length on both sides. So just grabbing the two and pull up and it will naturally balance. So when I go and pull it around I'm just gonna tie it here and I'm gonna toss this through that side once again. And then turn it over so it's already there ready for me and then tie and just tie it on this side it's extra security the way that I do it. Pull tight and then tie again. And now that it's been tied I can just safely cut down nice and short. So now my goal is is to get it off this. So in order to do that I just have to turn it over and just cut it along this side. Just do your best. cotton so it's a little um, more stronger than normal. So once it's cut then you're safely just going to slide it off. And just balance it out. Now what I want to do to get it to look perfect like you see in the photograph you want to just kind of eye up. You can see all the long strands that are here. Just make it, just give it a haircut. Then um, I want to just take some a steamer or just get it slightly damp and just run your fingers through it and just kind of pull it down like this. And then the last time I was using the center of the ball so it was a lot more rougher than that and then it's good to go. So in this case this one's actually ready without having to be steamed. So now I'm gonna take this long strand and I'm gonna attach it to the top of the hat. So what I wanna do is that I wanna put the hat on the jar just like that. You can see that. And then I want to take this and kinda get an eye up on how much I want it to dangle. I know from your angle it's kind of terrible. But I wanna dangle it to the point where it's not gonna hit the floor but it's pretty, it's got a nice dangle to it. And you notice that the dangle is close to the, the front here. Once you're satisfied with that just kind of mark it with your eyes visually and just pop up a hook through the center. And kind of pull down. When you pull just pull the starting strands. Don't pull the 
the one going to the tassel and you wanna always keep those two strands in balance. So then try it again. Just pull what you need in order to get the balance. And then pop it off. So what I want to do here is that I only wanna take one of the strands, I only need to grab only one and I want to pull that one strand through a piece of the blue fiber. All I want to just do is tie a knot, that's all. And the reason why I'm not using my hook is that I don't want it to go through there. So I just like go through the whole project. So I'm just grabbing onto a piece of the fiber of the blue and pulling it through. And when I pull through I have to make sure I don't change any of the distance. I did the actual one twice last time. So just test it once again. And once you're satisfied with it, just using the yellow, just tie a knot with itself. And that's all you need to do. And therefore, you're ready for graduation. So whether it's doing a blue one or black, doesn't really matter. You decide what's gonna work for you. But these are ultimately exceptionally cute and it's a really neat idea and probably a really great uh, graduation gift. So until next time, it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at yarnspirations.com. Have a great day. We hope to see you again real soon. Bye-bye.